Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today's topic is the languages of South Africa. The Republic of South Africa covers much of the southern tip of the African continent and is a place where numerous native African cultures as well as former colonial populations have converged, resulting in a state of true linguistic diversity. South Africa has 11 official languages that have been recognized in its constitution since 1993. If that seems like a lot to you, you're probably right. South Africa is among the countries with the largest number of official languages at the national level. Number one is actually neighboring Zimbabwe with 16 official languages, some of which are also official in South Africa. These are the 11 official languages of South Africa in order of most spoken to least spoken as a first language. Zulu, Hosa, Afrikaans, English, Northern Sutu, Tswana, Southern Sutu, Tsonga, Swazi, Venda, and Ndebele. Over 99% of South Africans speak one of these languages as a first language. All of these languages are members of the Southern Bantu branch of the Niger-Congo language family, with the exception of Afrikaans and English, which are Germanic languages brought to the country by Europeans. The Dutch first arrived in what is now South Africa in 1652, establishing the Cape Colony in the western portion of the country. Also living in this area were native Khoisan people and other Africans who spoke Bantu languages. The British seized control of the Cape Colony in 1815 and British settlers began to arrive. The Boers, the descendants of the original Dutch settlers, disliked many aspects of British rule, but one of them was the Anglicization of the Cape Colony and the attempt to force English on the Boers as a medium of instruction in schools. They wanted to continue to use Dutch as their medium of instruction and to continue speaking their distinct dialect of Dutch called Cape Dutch, which would later evolve into Afrikaans. Boers began the Great Trek, migrating inland and creating their own Boer republics in an area more densely populated with African tribes who spoke Bantu languages. The British later took control of the Boer republics and created the Union of South Africa in 1910 that eventually led to the creation of the Republic of South Africa. From that point on, there were two official languages, English and Dutch, but Dutch as spoken by the Boers had evolved into a distinct language called Afrikaans, which replaced Dutch as an official language in 1925. These two colonial languages became the prestige languages of South Africa, and speakers of other languages didn't really have any say in the matter. During the apartheid era, schools were segregated not only based on race, but also based on mother tongue. Native speakers of English and Afrikaans were taught in their native language throughout their schooling, with second language instruction in the other official language. Black South Africans were required to study in their mother tongue for most of their primary school years, after which point they normally studied in English. But in 1974, the apartheid government implemented a new policy requiring instruction in black schools to be conducted in a 50-50 split between English and Afrikaans, with the language of instruction depending on the course. This was implemented without consulting the black population, and opposition to this move led to the Soweto Uprising of 1976. Afrikaans was seen as the language of the oppressor, since the apartheid government was dominated by white speakers of Afrikaans, while English was seen as a more cosmopolitan language. When apartheid ended in the early 1990s, a new constitution was written that added nine additional African languages as official languages, in order to be more inclusive of the entire population. The education system now is based on freedom of choice, with every individual free to choose which of the 11 official languages to be educated in for the first part of their schooling, as long as there's sufficient demand for the school to provide it. That means that they don't have to study in their mother tongue if they don't want to. Let's take a look at the map of South Africa. When apartheid was abolished, the four provinces of South Africa and the homelands, enclaves for African ethnic groups, were abolished and nine new provinces were created. This map shows the most dominant languages in South Africa down to the local level. You can see that the 11 official languages are clustered mainly in certain areas and may predominate in certain provinces, but they don't correspond exactly to provincial borders. You can see that Afrikaans predominates in the west, while the Bantu languages predominate in the east, and English predominates in South Africa's major urban centers. As you can see, there's quite an intricate linguistic situation in the eastern part of the country, so let's zoom in and look at the African languages there. As I mentioned earlier, the non-European languages of South Africa are mainly members of the southern Bantu branch of the Niger-Congo language family, and these account for about 70% of the population, or around 40 million people. These southern Bantu languages display some features typical of the Bantu languages in general. 
They follow an SVO word order. Like almost all Bantu languages, they're tonal, and they are largely agglutinative and feature a large number of affixes to nouns and verbs. Most Bantu languages do not have click sounds, but many of these southern Bantu languages do, as a result of contact with the Khoisan languages. The nine main southern Bantu languages of South Africa can be further categorized into three smaller subdivisions, the Nguni languages, the Sututswana languages, and the Tswaronga or Tsonga group. Venda forms its own group, so there are actually four subdivisions including this one. The Nguni branch of the southern Bantu tree contains four of South Africa's official languages, Zulu, Osa, Swazi, and Ndebele. The first two are the two most spoken languages within South Africa as a first language, with Zulu representing 23% of the population and Xhosa representing 16% of it. The other two, on the other hand, are spoken by only 2.5% and 2.1%, respectively. Zulu is mainly spoken in KwaZulu-Natal, and most of Mpumalanga, where Swazi and Ndebele are spoken as well. Xhosa is the majority language of the Eastern Cape, but has communities of speakers in other provinces as well, as other official languages do. The Nguni languages feature click consonants. You can hear one of them in the name of the language, Xhosa. Actually, this is the first time I've tried to pronounce a click consonant, so I may be pronouncing the name of the language wrong from the point of view of a native speaker. But I guess it's something like that. Xhosa. All of the Nguni languages are mutually intelligible to a large extent. Sututswana. The second largest of the southern Bantu branches is the Sututswana branch, which has three languages within it. Northern Sutu, representing 9.1% of South Africa's population. Tswana, with 8% and Southern Sutu, or simply Sutu, with 7.6%. Altogether, they represent just under a quarter of the population of South Africa, around 13.6 million people. Each of these three languages serves as the majority language in the province that it's most widely spoken in, Southern Sutu in the Free State, Tswana in the Northwest Province, and there is also a significant population of speakers in the Northern Cape, with which it shares a border, and Northern Sutu in Limpopo, Southern Sutu contains click consonants due to contact with Nguni languages, while some urban varieties of Northern Sutu have in recent times been acquiring clicks as well. Tswana uses some click sounds, but only in interjections and idiophones, onomatopoeia, for example. And like the Nguni languages, the Sutu Tswana languages are generally mutually intelligible as well. Tsonga or Tswaronga. Although there are other languages within this branch, the only one that has official status is Tsonga. Other languages of this group are mutually intelligible and are oftentimes considered part of the Tsonga language. Found in the northeast, most of the Tsonga-speaking people live in Limpopo or Mpumalanga. Tsonga features click sounds in just a few words. Another interesting phonological feature is whistled sibilant consonants. I haven't been able to find a sample from Tsonga, but here's a sample of a similar sound in the Shona language. Sha, she, she, shu, shu. Sha, she, she, shu, shu. Venda. One of the less spoken of the official languages in South Africa, Venda comprises 2.4% of the population, or 1.3 million speakers, who are almost all concentrated on the northern border of Limpopo, near Zimbabwe, where its closest linguistic relatives live. Venda has no click sounds. Afrikaans and English. The two Germanic languages of South Africa, Afrikaans and English are the third and fourth most spoken languages in the country, with 13.5% and 9.6% of citizens speaking them as their first language, respectively. People outside of South Africa might assume that native speakers of Afrikaans are all white, but that's not the case. It's the majority language in the Northern Cape and Western Cape provinces, where most of the nation's colored population, or mixed race population, lives. And more than 75% of colored South Africans speak Afrikaans as their first language. Why is that? It's because they were part of the language's development. The origin of the colored community lies in the early days of the Cape Colony, when Dutch settlers intermarried with indigenous Khoisan women or slaves from Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. But they also interacted linguistically, and by learning Dutch imperfectly as a second language, they influenced the direction of the Dutch dialect that would evolve into Afrikaans. It's also spoken as a native language by smaller numbers of the South Asian and Black South African populations. And it's spoken by over 60% of the white population as a native language. In total, it's the first language of about 13.5% of the population. 
and it's spoken by an even larger number as a second language. If you haven't seen my language profile on Afrikaans from a couple of years ago, you can check it out right here. English is spoken as a native language mainly in the Western Cape, Gauteng, and KwaZulu-Natal, as these are where the major cities can be found. Plus, it's widely spoken as a second language. English is the native language of 9.6% of the population, including around 36% of the white population. It's also the native language of most Indian South Africans. They speak with an accent distinct from white South African speakers of English. During the apartheid era, interaction with whites was limited, which allowed their own distinct variety of English to develop in isolation, with some phonological influences from Indian languages. I've mentioned the Khoisan languages a few times, and you may be wondering why they aren't on the list of official languages. Well, the Khoisan were the first indigenous people of much of South Africa before the migration of Bantu peoples and later Europeans. Through conflict with Bantu and Europeans, Khoisan were driven into a much smaller area, and now most Khoisan live in the Kalahari Desert. Some Khoisan intermarried with Europeans and became part of the colored population, while others died from conflict and disease. The end result of all this is that only a very small population of Khoisan remain in South Africa, and their Khoisan languages are therefore not widely spoken and are not official languages. Khoisan languages do not form a single language family and are not accepted as being related to each other, but all of them feature extensive use of click consonants. As I stated before, the click sounds used in Bantu languages come from contact with Khoisan languages. The most widely spoken Khoisan language in South Africa is Khoi Khoi, or Nama, with around 50,000 speakers. This language has an additional 250,000 speakers in neighboring Namibia. There are other Khoisan languages in South Africa that are severely endangered, like Griqua, with only a few dozen speakers remaining. Language in society. In a society with such linguistic diversity, it's inevitable that the majority of the population will be bilingual or multilingual. Most white and colored South Africans are bilingual in English and Afrikaans, and a smaller number speak one of the African languages as well. Indian South Africans speak English and usually some Afrikaans, and some speak an Indian language as well, typically older people. Many black South Africans speak three, four, five, or even more languages. It's common for them to speak their native African language, English and Afrikaans, and one or more other African languages. They're often able to speak the other languages of the same subgroup as their native language because they're closely related and in many cases mutually intelligible. You may be wondering, if the languages within each subgroup are mutually intelligible, why are they considered separate languages? Well, what is a language versus what is a dialect is a murky issue as always, but I think it's partly because they each have their own standardized variety, and it's partly because each one is associated with a distinct ethnic group. These days, business and politics are mostly conducted in English, and English is the most common language of broadcast and media. For a long time, English and Afrikaans had equal status as dual lingua francas of South Africa, but Afrikaans has been declining in that regard. That's partly due to the stigma attached to Afrikaans, as it's seen as the language of apartheid. In addition to that, education in South Africa tends to lean toward English. In typical South African schools, the first three grades are taught in the student's mother tongue, but after that, schoolwork is conducted in either Afrikaans or English. Schools can teach in the native language longer, but since secondary school matriculation exams are only conducted in English and Afrikaans, there's a strong motivation to switch to one of those languages early on. But rather than Afrikaans, most choose English due to its utility and prestige. And in many cases, families will forego students being taught in their first language and go straight into English to jumpstart their proficiency. But whether this is a help or a hindrance is a source of much debate. The emphasis on English and Afrikaans after the first three or four years of initial schooling is a lasting influence of the colonial era. Today there are 11 official languages, and in theory and in law they are equal, but in practice English and Afrikaans are still the most influential languages at the national level. And this is still the case for now, despite the fact that Afrikaans has lost some of its prestige. The question of the day, for South Africans, which languages do you speak, and in what situations do you use them? And for other people, how many official languages are there in your country? Do you think that system works well for your country? Be sure to follow LangFocus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters, especially these ones on the screen who are my top-tier Patreon supporters. Many thanks to them as always.
And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.